Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, today we're going to be starting on our, I'm going to call it the Base Model 300B amplifier. And we're going to be trying to meet a price point. And you may be looking at this going, Skooky, that looks like the 2A3 amp. And it is. We're going to be using this as a template for the 2A3 and the 300B amps that I build. And the only thing that's going to be different is the iron in the back, which would be the output transformers and the power transformer, and the circuitry inside. Also, the 2A3 amp has got these hum pots on the top. 300B amp's not going to have that. The 2A3 amp has got a vent right here for the cathode resistors that are just underneath here. On the 300B amp, we're going to be mounting them on top of the amp because I can't find 880 ohm resistors that I can mount like this. So the only ones I could find were 880 ohms top mount guys, so or chassis mount. And I feel like they need to be out in the open to get some air. So... They're going to be mounted up here instead of the screen, but we'll keep the screen over here on this side. We'll keep the meter. 300B, we'll use a 100-volt meter because it's higher cathode voltage. And the rest of the layout's going to be the same. The base model, probably going to leave off the tube rings to save a little money. I have to calculate up how much that costs. It is a little bit of expense, but it's not a lot. And I'm using these clip mount sockets that don't have mounting holes so it'll look really clean even without these tube rings i've had people actually say they would prefer that they weren't on here and so we'll make that an option and may end up putting like a black knob on the front just to kind of tone down the whole thing gonna leave the iron powder coated black because we got a black transformer there's no reason for me to strip these things down and have to sandblast and paint them that's just extra work for me and that'll save some money just being able to bolt the transformers down so anyway let's get a bare chassis up here and get some transformers and start just kind of laying stuff out and figuring out what this thing is going to look like so here was the initial iron and parts that i was planning on using on this base model 300B amp. We've got a 193H, it's a 5 Henry 200 milliamp choke. The same choke I've used on my 2A3, I used it on my EL34 amps. Had really good success with these chokes. And I'm gonna run, instead of a dual split rail choke setup like I ran on my more deluxe 300B. We're going to run this choke with a 50 ohm RC filter second stage afterwards and just have a single rail power supply, which honestly should work fine. I mean, obviously, putting two more chokes in it and adding more power supply capacitance and that sort of thing is a bonus, but it's also expensive. And so, we're trying to hit a price point, and I don't think there's going to be any problem. I know my 2A3 amp is perfectly quiet running that power supply, so I don't think it's going to be a problem on a 300B either. These are the 20 watt 3.5K output transformers that I had wound at musical power supply. And I've never used them before, but after listening to their transformers on my EL34 amp, I know they make a really good sounding transformer. And they're local here, or in Tennessee, they're not far away. I like being able to support a local business, or at least a U.S. manufacturer. Don't have to worry about tariffs, like if we went with this, you know, either one of these ISO Tango transformers, they went up in price last fall like 25%, and I'm sure now they've got another 10% tariff on them that somebody's going to have to absorb, and it's probably going to be 
you. It's probably not going to, I'm not going to absorb it. And I doubt the folks selling these are absorbing that 10% either. And so sticking with USA made iron, at least for this base model amp, because we're trying to hit a price point. So these are two A32s, but they're very similar in size to the 300B. So I just put them in here for kind of layout purposes. The only thing that I'm not happy with is I ordered this 300BX power transformer from Hammond and it's specifically made for using in a 300B amp and I didn't realize what a monster this thing is. It weighs almost 12 pounds. You can see it's by far the biggest piece of anything on the top of the amp and to me it just it's just out of place. Maybe if we were using these really huge, you know, 30 watt Tango transformers, that it would look more in place, but it just doesn't fit in with this aesthetic to me. The other thing is it has five volt taps for the output tubes, and they're at 1.2 amps. When you convert it to DC, you lose some of that amperage. You have to have probably a two amp winding to run it at DC, from my understanding. And typically that's what I've been doing. The other thing is there's not enough headroom in that voltage to run a voltage regulator. And so you've got unregulated DC going to the output tubes and that's not ideal. The regulators not only obviously regulate the voltage, they also pull out any residual ripple that might be in the 5 volt DC rail. And so, don't think I'm going to be using this big monster guy. Plus, it's 288 milliamps, which is way more than we need for running a pair of 300B tubes. They're going to be at like 80 mils each. And then with the driver tubes, a 200 milliamp transformer is plenty. So what we're going to do is take this big guy, take it off, and in its place put this 274BX. It is a much more compact transformer. It's got a little bit lower voltage. It's 750 volt center tapped, which is going to allow us to hit the plate voltage on the money. This is the transformer that I use on my personal 300B amp, and I know that plate voltage works really well at 80 milliamps, and the tubes sound great, and they're not stressed, and the amp's still going to make about 7.5 watts, but the tubes are going to have a super long life, which if you're buying, especially like EML tubes, or if you decide to upgrade to some really nice tubes in the future, you'll absolutely get the life expectancy that you should, which, you know, five years, ten years probably would you would get out of them depending on how often you use the amp. So, and I just think this aesthetically looks so much better. That giant transformer made the output transformers look microscopic, and they're really not. They're fairly big output transformers. They're just getting dwarfed by that giant monster transformer. The other thing, it also allows me to use, Hammond makes a dual secondary 14 volt filament transformer. With, it's got two seven volt windings. If I use each of those separately, and pull the 7 volts AC off of it, that gives me enough headroom to use those LDO voltage regulators, which will pull it down to exactly 5 volts. And that way, you also know that no matter what your line voltage is doing, you're not overvolting the filaments. And I know in the U.S., line voltage can vary a lot. Especially in the summer, it might be like, 120 volts in the winter some places they see 125 volts and when you start you know doing the math of the turns ratio in the transformer that means the voltage can just go all over the place and 300 b tubes like being run with 5 volts on the filament and so I'll feel more comfortable being able to have a regulated 5 volt DC heaters 
And I know they sound good. I know there's folks that claim those LDO, which is low dropout, voltage regulators sound horrible and they're sucking the music out of the... I haven't heard any of that. And so I'm comfortable building it with those regulators and I think it'll make it a more reliable amplifier. Plus it just looks better. And so this is what I'm going to start laying out. I'm going to use the 2A3 tube placement as the template and then oh yeah the rectifier tube is going to sit right over here kind of like that between the power transformer and the choke and power switch in the front volume control over here having the input tubes kind of pushed together gives you some room here for options on a volume pot and then may even use an alps volume pot instead of an audio note that's another $20 or $30 saved. And when you're talking about trying to do a base model amp at a price point, you got to save cost everywhere. You know, we can't put top shelf stuff in the whole amp. I do think that I'm going to stick with using audio note cathode bypass caps because that's a point where I think it's a mistake to skimp. And still going to use Mundorf coupling caps. They're not that expensive. And I mean, I may end up using audio note volume pot, but we'll see. I'll have to see what the price difference is. I have found the Hi Fi Collective over in England has got the bomb pricing on those audio note volume pots. They're like less than half of what they cost from the parts connection up in Canada, which they're great folks too, but again, Pricing is everything when you're buying, you know, I buy those pots 10 at a time. And if they're $25 instead of, you know, $65, you're buying 10 of them. That's $250 instead of $650. So that's a, that's a big difference. And then obviously in the back, we'll have the IC socket, have the speaker jacks, and the RCA jacks also in the back. And yeah. That's what we're going to be doing. And the circuit is going to be the same as what is on my website with the previous budget 300B. That's what we called it. This is going to be a base model 300B. Trying to One of the guys that was asking about one of these amps said, please don't call it a budget amp. It's so, okay. We'll call it a base model. And we'll use it as kind of the starting point. And again, I may skimp the tube rings on this. I need to look at what those cost a piece. They're probably, I mean, that's another $25 plus the time spent, you know, finding the hole centers and centering those things up around the tubes, whatever. That's just time and money saved. I will still go ahead and drill holes around the upper tube bases for ventilation. I think that's important to have. And... Given that these are already powder coated black, these are, I'm just going to leave it just like that. Powder coated black, silver screws. I may get silver screws to mount the transformers to the chassis and just kind of go with a more utilitarian kind of a theme on this. And then obviously we can do more upscale one with, you know, paint the iron use like this FC20S output transformer as an upgrade on the same kind of layout chassis so we can have a base and then a deluxe model and probably going to sell them without tubes and just let folks buy whatever level of tubes they're comfortable buying whether it's EML or they want to buy Horizon you know I could probably get a deal or a discount coupon from George up at Tubes USA, if you want to get some EML tubes, he mentioned that, that when you buy an amp, you could get a 10% discount on some EML tubes. But, you know, I have to finalize that with him. You can probably work out something with Melody at PS Vane, too, for, you know, if you purchase one of my amps, that you can get a discount on a set of Horizon tubes for it, if that's what you want to do. And I will say, highly recommend getting a new old stock rectifier tube that, I haven't found a new production 5A or 4 that will reliably run on an amp that's pulling 
almost 200 milliamps. They work fine on something like a 2A3 or you know, even my EL34 amp, they'd probably be okay, but this is really pushing what a single rectifier tube can handle, and the new old stock ones definitely will hang in there for the duration. So, anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about this layout, and especially about this smaller transformer. I just think this looks so much more in scale with the rest of the iron. The other one is just, and I'll, I'm sure I'll find a place for it or a use for it in the future. But for now, it's just gone on the shelf. And I think they kind of missed the boat making it so big. Because I had ISO custom make me a power transformer. Let me get that and show you what that guy looks like compared to this Hammond. Actually, when I got it out of the box... It's about the same size and weight as that Hammond. So I guess when you start combining a bunch of windings into the same transformer, it just gets big like this. This custom one that I had done by ISO Tango for me, I had them do the 300B windings at 7 volts at 2 amps to handle doing regulated DC heaters. And so this is what I'm going to be putting in my super deluxe 300b that i'm building for a customer that's going to be using these big fc30 3.5 output transformers i got a tango choke to go with it and it's going to be like a super deluxe version and we're going to be going over it soon too i'm probably going to do these kind of in parallel at least as far as showing the layout and then starting to get the parts ordered for them. And so look forward to that in the near future. So yeah, we're going to be doing kind of some parallel 300B builds here. So if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters and the other folks that have joined the membership thing here on YouTube. Those guys get a preview usually of a day or two of my videos i'm not gating any content i've seen several youtubers that are you know paywalling content and i'm never going to do that just like i never charge for my schematics or my bombs i just put them on my website and then if you feel so inclined that you've got value out of that stuff consider making a donation at my website Quite a few people have done that, but I understand some people are really on a tight budget and they just can't afford to do that, and that's fine too. I like contributing to the community in the way that I'm able to do through YouTube. So, thanks again for all you subscribers, and until the next video, have a nice day!